So good to see everybody here tonight. I just want to welcome everybody to Sunshine Bible Church. Just want to remind everybody that next next Sunday we'll be having food and fellowship after church. So bring a friend, come and eat after church, and have some fellowship. I want to start out with a uh, scripture verse, Psalms 9, 1 and 2. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all of thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise unto thy name, O thou most high. Let's get in here and praise the Lord with us tonight. One glorious day Jesus came, made me whole. He so completely did satisfy my soul. Now as I face life's dark trouble, stormy sea, I wonder if he is satisfied with me. I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. I want my life to be what he have it be. And when I come to that great eternity, his smile will say he is satisfied with me. I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. I want my life to be what he have it be. And when I come to that great eternity, his smile will say he is satisfied with me. I'm satisfied with God's great redemption plan. I'm satisfied it's sufficient for all men. I'm satisfied with His work on Calvary. But is my Lord fully satisfied with me? And I want my Lord to be satisfied with me I want my life to be what he have it be and when I come to that great eternity his smile will say he is satisfied with me Lord give me strength give me courage make me bold that I might lead some lost sheep unto the fold that I might stand unafraid unmoved for thee that you might be fully satisfied with me and I want my Lord to be satisfied with me I want my life to be what he have it be and when I come to that great eternity his smile will say he is satisfied with me Lord give me strength give me courage make me bold that I might lead some lost sheep unto the fold that I might stand unafraid, unmoved for thee. That 
that you might be fully satisfied with me. And I owe my Lord to be satisfied with me. I owe my life to be what he'd have it be. And when I come to that great eternity, his smile will say he is satisfied with me. And when I come to that great eternity, his smile will say he is satisfied with me. But anyway, sometimes things happen. You don't know what's going on. But uh, I have three. Uh, I have Brother Jonah come up here. And I need sailor number one. And sailor number two. We got a treat for you tonight. It's a real treat here. Real treat. Now, the book of Jonah is really long. And I ain't going to read this whole story. So I thought maybe I could do this just a little bit faster this way. But here in this story, we read in our scriptures here, before we read them, I want to uh, give you a little foundation. We have a man of God here, and his name is Jonah. He's a man of God. The Bible says he's a man of God. He knows the Lord, and he knows the Lord well. We have our two sailors right here. Come over here, two sailors. Don't get shy on me. Sailor number one over here. Sailor number two there. And uh, you all can help me preach here. And the Bible says that Jonah knows the Lord. He knows the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And Jonah knows the attributes of God. He knows the voice of God. The Bible said that Jonah knew that God was a gracious God. And he was merciful. He was slow to anger. And that God was kind. And we know that, don't we? And that God can and will repent of his anger is what the Bible says. So Jonah is a man of God and Jonah hears the word of the Lord. And God tells Jonah to go down to this big wicked city of Nineveh. That's what he told him. It's a wicked city. But Jonah goes blatantly against the word of the Lord. <laughs> we know who's going to star in the Christmas play. <laughs> he goes blatantly against the word of the Lord and goes down to the sea and gets in a ship and heads directly in the wrong direction to a city called Tarshish. You all remember the story. And the Bible says that he flees from the presence of the Lord. He flees from the presence of the Lord. So they all are sailing on over. They're all in the ship now and they're all sailing on over to Tarshish. And Brother Jonah gets into the sides of the ship asleep. And sailor number one, come over here, start rowing. So they're, fly, they're all sailing over to Tarshish. They're all sailing over to Tarshish. And, uh, and up comes this mighty tempest. Up comes this mighty... We're getting this on video. <clears throat> oh, that's my good It comes up on this mighty tempest because they have this disobedient word, uh, man of God here named Jonah in this ship. And uh, this mighty tempest comes up and the waves of the water are raging and it's going contrary to this little ship. So the heathen men of the start ship of, of this ship start praying. They start praying to their gods. They pray to their gods that their gods would save them. And as they're praying, they can't figure out why all this is happening. They happen to notice Brother Jonah asleep <laughs> on the sides of the ship. While everybody is uh, feels like they're dying, they're fighting against this storm, they're fighting against this tempest and the rage and sea, and they get together and they yell to Jonah, get up, you sleeper. Get up, you sleeper. <laughs> Call on your God. Call on your God. Sailor number one, you can interact here. 
<laughs> all right, and they're all over here now. They're all over on this side now. <clears throat> and they're trying to figure out why the gods are upset. And they start thinking that God is upset with someone on the ship, right? Remember the story. So what they do is they, the Bible says they draw lots. Now, when I hear of them drawing lots, I sort of picture them drawing straws, drawing straws. Wait, don't draw straws yet. <laughs> so they draw straws. Now they draw straws. The sailor draws a straw, not him, not him. And then Jonah draws a straw. And the lot or the straw, the Bible says, uh, doesn't say the straw, but the lot falls on Jonah. And then they say to Jonah, hey, who are you? Why are, where are you coming from? What's your nationality? Why have you bringing this evil on us? Why is this evil coming up on us? <laughs> so old Jonah opens his mouth. Look at the camera, Jonah. So Jonah opens his mouth and says, I'm a Hebrew. <clears throat> I'm a man that fears God. And I serve a God that made the heaven and the earth. Not your gods, but I serve the God that made the dry, the dry ground and the sea that we're sailing on here today. And I have disobeyed the word of the Lord is what Jonah said. He's a good man of God. He's, he knows why they're in this quandary, this, this, this tempest, this raging sea that's contrary to this vessel. And, and Brother Jonah, knowing this, he tells them that I have fled. And it, and it says this in this verse here. I have fled the presence of the Lord. And knowing that this sea is raging, he tells them, he said, hey, look, if you guys in this ship want to live, you're going to have to throw me overboard. <laughs> throw me overboard into the sea. So the men, they listen to him, but they try to row some more. They try to row some more. But the sea was raging and it was going to be the end for everyone. And they go grab up Jonah. And they pray. They pray, brothers. <laughs> and they ask the Lord. They say, Lord, not to let us perish for Jonah's life. And they ask God to not lay the innocent blood of this man, Jonah, upon them. They pray this nice prayer. So they get a hold of brother Jonah and they take old Jonah. <laughs> Watch it, mom. And they swing <laughs> and they swing and they swing and they throw old Jonah over. Stop. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Sailor number one and sailor number two. Jonah's in the ocean. Jonah. You're in the ocean. <laughs> Grandma, you can be at ease now. We really go going to throw them. <clears throat> so Jonah is falling down to the bottom of the sea. Jonah is falling down to the bottom of the sea. Disobedient Jonah, right? That's what the Bible said. And the Bible says... That when they took this disobedient man and they took him and they threw him out on the out of the ship and threw him into the sea. The Bible said there was a great calm. The sea ceased its raging and was calm. The sea ceased its raging and was calm. You know, I got to thinking about this when I was studying this out. You know, a lot of us tonight are living lives that are raging. Sometimes our lives are up. Sometimes they're down. We have families that are in such turmoil. It seems like the tempest 
is raging always. We never get a break, Brother Jerry. We never get a break. We have jobs. It just seems like our lives are just in this quandary. And I was thinking about this thing. And you know, just like these men in this ship, they took this disobedient man and threw him in the water. It might pay us. It might pay us. If we're having lives like that and our children are in such a mess or whatever, that we, we go looking around in our ship and see if we search the living room, the bedroom, the closets, the refrigerator, the cupboards, and anything that we have in our home, in our house, in our job, in our car, that's disobedient to this word of God that our Lord would not be pleased with. Maybe we could do like those guys in that ship and take that stuff and just throw it overboard. And maybe us too, we can experience that calm that they've seen in this, this thing. Thank you, Brother Jonah. <laughs> Which brings us back. Which brings us to our scriptures. And if you'd like to stand, if you can, let's read God's word. Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now this is quoted, our Lord, our Lord really quoted this scripture in Matthew. I think it was chapter 20, maybe 12, maybe chapter 12. I can't remember what chapter it was. But he calls this great fish that is called in this Old Testament a whale. He calls it a whale. And chapter 2, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about, and the weeds were wrapped around my head, about my head, and I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee and to thine holy temple. Verse 10, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. This verse, uh, chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went into Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Verse 10, And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. He did it not. Hallelujah. And I want to speak tonight on a title, a simple thought. Let's stay in the presence of God. Let's stay in the presence of God. Let's all pray real quick. Blessed Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all you've done. I thank you, Lord, for your sweet spirit that I feel right now in my heart. I thank you, Lord, for your presence that we have in this church house tonight. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to open our hearts and our minds to the truth of your wonderful word. And we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody said, and you may be seated. Thank you for standing.
Jonah. What a man. Jonah. Nobody has ever gone lower in their life, literally, than Jonah. And he really was a great man of God. Jonah lived a life where he knew, he could know the voice of the Lord. And the Lord knew Jonah. And because of that relationship, God had a work for Jonah to do. But Jonah let his own feelings get in his way. His own thoughts derailed him from that plan, from God's plan. And many of us tonight can relate to the life of Jonah. And it's because of his own self, Jonah's own self, that Jonah found himself out of God's plan. Laying in that belly of that whale, just swimming around. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? All the way down to the bottom of the ocean. Jonah said that in the scriptures that he, he was in the belly of hell. The belly of hell. That the depths of the, he was in the depths of the darkness of the sea. And that the waves of the ocean, the floods of water was over him. They compassed him about. And that he wallowed in the mire of that whale's stomach with the seaweed wrapped all around his head. And he went down to the bottom of the mountains. He went down and down and down. And as his soul fainted within him, he prayed. And as he was crying out for, to God for help, he remembered the Lord. And God heard the cry of Jonah. And the whole time that Jonah traveled through that, may I say hell, as Jonah called it, the darkness, the Bible says that God was listening to Jonah's prayers. God hears the prayers of his children, doesn't he? Feel like you're going through something terrible? Feel like you're almost in the belly of hell? God hears your prayer. He knows his children. His eyes are upon the righteous. The Lord was listening to brother Jonah. God's eyes were upon him. God will never leave us. He can never forsake us. But God will, and he'll never forsake his children. Psalms 139 verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? This is David talking. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? And I thought about Jonah when I read this. As I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, even there, shall thy hand lead me. And thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. Where the Spirit of God is, where I want to be. How about you? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, that's where I want to be. Where the anointing of God is, that's what I want. Hallelujah. We can find special help where the presence of God is, can't we? As a matter of fact, love can always be found where the Lord is. Sometimes it doesn't seem that way, does it? But love can be found where the Lord is. When it comes to worshiping God, I want to be where the spirit and the anointing of God are. For all my hope is in Jesus. I've been to events and festivals and I've been to many different places, different, I've been to different churches that I absolutely enjoyed. But let me come to a church where the Spirit of the Lord is moving in hearts and souls. That is what I long for. Where they sing the anointed songs of Zion 
And what God wants, he'll bless, won't he? It's what the preacher said. And I'm so happy for this church. I am. I'm not the first one to say that. That this church has helped me to understand and draw closer to God than I've ever been before. We've heard the word of the Lord spoken here. Everyone that comes up, they always, they always say a scripture, don't they? They say the word of the Lord. And I enjoy that. And the heartfelt testimonies that we hear. And we can feel them. The presence of the Lord is here in this church. It's his church. The presence of God is here now. No question. Look what he's done for us. Look what he's done for us. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong now. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying that everyone else in these other churches are wrong. I'm not saying that at all. As a matter of, matter of fact, I pray for the local churches around here. We are on the same team, so to speak. No competition. None. No competition. We as a church have prayed for churches around us. We prayed for their pastors. We prayed for their wives, their children. We have, prepared, we have prayed for their continued success, haven't we? Let the church roll on. Let the church roll on. We have experienced the touch and the power of God in ways here that we had never dreamed of. You have felt the spirit of God in this church. How about when the preacher says things and you wonder, how in the world did he know what and when to say those things. Have you ever felt that way? I have. We think, well, I was just praying about that. I was just reading that scripture. That's the working of the spirit. It's the working of the spirit. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's good. And we've been tasting and truly the Lord is so good. Hallelujah. I'm speaking tonight on let's stay in the presence of the Lord. When Jonah disobeyed the will of God or the work of God, that work that God gave Jonah or had for Jonah stopped. He went the wrong way. We have an enemy, an adversary, the Bible says that does not want to see anything good happen in a church, in a soul, in your family, in our children. The enemy is out to cause the, the word of God calls stumbling blocks or roadblocks to keep us from getting help. The enemy wants to stop God's work. Yes, he does. He causes divisions. He doesn't want any church to succeed. Period. He doesn't want any of them to do anything. But we have been given a free will to live our life. A free will. God has given us a free will. A free will to do what we want in our lives, we are living in a nation or a country where freedom is the foundation or the bedrock of our society that we live in. And when it comes to serving God and getting what we need for ourselves and our children, we need to take advantage of this God-given freedom that we enjoy. We look around, you listen to the news, it seems like that freedom's getting ready to go quick. You know, I, I hate to use the word socialism, but uh, we can see that, can't we? So we have an opportunity. We enjoy this freedom now. And as Christians, we are not bound. We were freed from the captivity of sin, alcohol and drugs and the flesh. No more has us bound. 
Those chains fell off of us the night we got saved. The night we repented. The Apostle Paul told him in the, the book of Acts that I was born free. I was born free. The enemy can tell us that we are bound, and he'll try to. He tries to keep us in a box, doesn't he? I don't like to live in a box. I caught a turtle one time. We was going to Kentucky. The Kentucky people were going, but we was Kentucky, and there was this little box turtle went across when I was a little boy, and we had to rescue the turtle. And I kept this turtle, and I kept him in a box. Kept him in a box. And then my mom told me, she says, well, son, do you really want to make the turtle suffer in a, little, in a box? Won't you let him go out and, 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 and eat and be free? And I felt bad. We, took, we let the turtle go. And then we couldn't find the turtle, but the lawnmower did. Sad story. I don't know how I got off on all that. Poor Skipper. But the enemy tries to keep us bound. He likes to keep us in a box, doesn't he? He tries to keep us in a box. And that box will limit us. And that has got to be always a certain way in our lives. He would like to make us think that it's just this one way. And nothing can ever change in our life. And it's true as long as you're in that box. As long as you are in that box, you might not ever be what God wants you to be. Your family and children might not ever live to the full potential. The full potential of, God, of what God wants them to live or they might not ever experience the true leading of the Spirit of God, the touch of God. Do you realize that there are people that go to church faithfully that have never been healed? There's people that's never been healed. There's people that go to churches faithfully across our nation that has never had the touch of God up on them. Isn't that such a shame? The presence of the Lord is what we want, isn't it? And really, it's not their fault. It's not all their fault. They've always been placed around people faithfully that don't value the presence of the Lord, Brother Gilly. The presence of the Lord. They've been around people that have fled the presence of the Lord years ago. But we have got to keep the presence of God. We've got to keep it. We have got to be the ones that stand up and speak the truth and show that truth by example. James 1 and 22, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I'm speaking tonight on let's stay in the presence of God. Let's stay in the presence of God. In our story here tonight, in the book of Jonah, the Bible said that Jonah rose up and fled from the presence of the Lord. It says, says it in a verse, in verse 3, it says it two different times. There's no mistaking. The Bible makes it very plain. And as a matter of fact, Jonah admits it to the, the men on the ship that he has fled the presence of the Lord. And when he does that, the men of the ship, when they find out that Jonah has fled the presence of the Lord, they go to pieces. Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually live our life, be spiritual enough to where when we see somebody fleeing from the presence of the Lord, that we would really take it upon our heart. We'd, we would see it and get excited. You understand what I'm saying? But the Bible says that they got, they got upset when they found out that Jonah had fled the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. People around us can see when we're not doing right. Can't they? And sometimes we can overlook where we actually stand with the Lord. Sometimes we think, well, it's no big deal. 
And like Jonah, sometimes we can find ourselves sleeping, asleep on the sides of the boat. But Jonah knew better. Jonah was comfortable in his own way. He had his own way of thinking. Jonah wanted it to happen like he wanted it. And he actually second-guessed the Lord. Jonah decided to go in the opposite way that the Lord was leading him to go. Like Jonah, it is easy to only see the things the way we want to see them ourselves. But we have got to know that our ways are not like God's ways. God sees the future. He knows the plans he has for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God knows our ways. We have been brought out of this world and placed into his presence. The worst thing we can do as Christians, God's children, would be to flee in the opposite direction now. Like Jonah, we need to listen. We need to listen to that, that, that word of the Lord, that small voice, the voice of love that calls out from down deep in our heart. James, in the book, the third chapter of James, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. This is one of my favorite scriptures. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle. This is the word of the Lord, gentle, easy to be entreated. Have you heard some words of the Lord that wasn't easily to be entreated? Full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality and without hypocrisy says it in James. James goes on to say that, that the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Is sown in peace of them that make peace. Them that make peace. And it'd be a good verse, to, it'd be a good chapter to read tonight if you have, if you have, if you, if you want to know what to read tonight, that'd be a good one to start in James chapter three. God changed the heart of Jonah. He brought Jonah down. He humbled Jonah down to a place where Jonah finally relinquished his own will and was obedient to the word of God, to the will of God. Jonah came back to the presence of the Lord. The whale that took Jonah for the ride of his life up and down in that sea. Talk about drama. Talk about drama. Talk about stress in that whale's stomach. Wonder how far that great fish took old Jonah down in that sea. Jonah found himself entangled in things he never could have imagined. Darkness. Jonah was probably so sickened. I guarantee you that the, that the whale wasn't the only thing vomiting on that day. Sister Betty. Betty skydived the other day. But old Jonah, you know he was sick up and down. And we wonder why our life, comparing it to Jonah here, we wonder why our life has always been in such chaos. Our marriages, our families, up and down, such drama. Right when we think that it's starting to get better and things are starting to look up and whammo, back down again. Without the presence of God, our life is always going to be a roller coaster, up and down, in darkness of this old world. Sometimes when we get in a place or to a place where we can see, see and feel this presence of God, like Jonah, sometimes some of us start looking in that opposite direction again. 
We quit praying like we should. And we get into another boat with people that don't enjoy the presence of God. And then we wonder why life doesn't give us a break. But we got to keep praying. Let's not fight the presence of God. Let's stay in the leading of God. Sister Carter, if you'd like to come on up. Sister uh, Monica. God has given us a wonderful outlook here in this church. We are surrounded by some of the sincerest Christians that you have ever met. Brothers and sisters that love you and are not afraid to speak the truth in righteousness, in righteousness, with love. And they encourage you. Thank God for them. Thank God for them kind of people. Them's the kind of people I want to be around. People that are encouraging. Thank God for this church. Jonah cried unto the Lord from what he thought was the belly of hell. We need to get out of the sin cycle. No more drama in life. Let's stay committed to God and the things of God. You know, some of us get our feelings hurt so easy. Sometimes we feel as if everyone that has anything to say, it's directed towards us in some negative way. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes people do say some very hurtful things. Some of them say it on purpose. But God has saved us from all of that. He has saved us from all of that. We shouldn't think like that anymore as Christians. We need to prefer our brothers and our sisters and pray for them. After Jonah prayed, God gave Jonah a second chance and he came back to the presence of the Lord. Prayer changes things. Jonah then obeyed the word of the Lord and God used Jonah to save a city, a whole city. God did not used Jonah until Jonah prayed and came back to the presence of the Lord. We have asked and promised the Lord when we got saved to use us in his kingdom. Let's don't go back to that box where we once were bound to never do anything for God again. Let's don't do that. Let us purpose in our hearts tonight and in our minds that we will stay in the will of God, in the will of God, not man's will, but in the will of God. And I'll say this tonight. Our church is in its infancy. We've only, we only have one service a week here. And as a matter of fact, we didn't start that until the last week in January but watch out. We've got a lot more. We have so many more opportunities ahead. And they're coming. In the name of Jesus. God is using us mightily for his kingdom. Sometimes I think he's separating the sheep. Not from the goats. He's doing some separating. But the Lord's moving in our midst. He's going to use us mightily. But we have to stay, Brother Randolph, in the presence of the Lord. Let's do this the right way. How about it? Let's do it the right way. Let's do it God's way. Everything we do, let it be done in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you all like to stand, I'm finished. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your wonderful word. Thank you, Lord, for, for the, the touch of God that you've, and the moving of the spirit, Lord, that you've given us tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this special touch. Lord, we pray, Lord, for a greater desire, Lord, 
to stay in your presence, to stay in your house. Lord, to do your will, to be that child that would, when we could stand before you on that great day, that you will look at us and say that, that we did good, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, that we can enter in into your glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for each and every heart here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for how you've moved and how you've touched. Lord, and I pray that you give this church a special blessing. Lord, that you give us a special touch, that it would be said, Lord, that this church has the presence of God, the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in, if you're here tonight while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, if you're here tonight and you want this presence that I have spoken about tonight in your heart and in your soul tonight, I would like to invite you up in just a simple altar call tonight. Just invite you up tonight and give you one more opportunity to know the Lord. To know the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves his children. Everyone else, anyone else that would like to come up and pray tonight, I'd like to open up the altars for everyone. If everyone would like to come up and just spend a few minutes in prayer and ask the Lord to keep us in his presence. Amen. Sing, sister. We're so thankful for everybody that came out tonight. And want you to come back and be a part of all of our services. If you're not um, signed up for our emailing list, you can go to our website, sunshinebiblechurch.org. And that's S-O-N instead of S-U-N. That being said, we're going to ask Brother Jonah to come up here and dismiss us in prayer. Remembering our travels. Can we get everybody to stand? Also, next Sunday... We're going to have food and fellowship after church. <laughs> Most of all, I want to thank the Lord for salvation. And I love him with all my heart. And I just appreciate everyone here tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I love Sunshine Bible Church. And I'm glad that Brother Chaplin and his family, and I just love each and every one here tonight. Let's all bow our head and pray. Lord, we thank and praise you tonight for each and everything that's happening, Father. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father. We just ask you tonight, Father, just to be with each and every person that, to here tonight, Father. As we go our separate ways, we ask you to bless each and every one. And Lord, give us back the next appointed time that you want us to be. And we just love you with all our heart. And thank you, Jesus. Amen.